to bring up my wife, um, to introduce us as the candidates uh, for the pastoral position. Uh, she is a great wife to me, an amazing wife, uh, mother to my children, an amazing business partner, of course, a prayer warrior, and a co-heir in the ministry and the kingdom, my wife. This is my wife and myself. We present uh, to us to you guys uh, for your consideration. Um, after church, we will mo be more than happy to discuss, answer any questions that you guys may have, any concerns, anything you, that, you, that you may want to ask us. Good morning, church. He is risen. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Okay, I want to share a little bit about my family. Um, we've been happily married for 15 years. We have three beautiful children, praise God. And from the beginning of our marriage, we make a decision that we will serve Lord and do as much as we can to serve other people. And for the past 15 years, we've been um, working together as a team, blessing people. And I just want to say I fully support my husband's decision to become a pastor. And my fa uh, our family will be together in this and our children are also so um, he's been preaching once in a while I'm being I am a Sunday school teacher for the past five years and it, here we are for the past 13 years we've been faithfully attending this church I can literally name the times that we miss service either for vacation or a sickness or whatever the case was um, and today we present ourselves to you guys again my wife is a Sunday school teacher show so she will be going to the Sunday school but you can ask us anything else after church I'm a little I don't say confused but a little disappointed my machine just erased all my passages <laughs> I have them here but if, do, you, do, do you guys need them displayed? Because we don't have that, that much time. Or can we skip that for now? Yeah, okay, ready. awesome. Praise God. Of course, everybody brought their Bibles. Raise your Bibles. Weigh them. A good 70%. A good 70%. A couple of weeks ago, when me and Pastor were talking about me speaking on uh, Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, the first thing that came to my mind, you know, um, if if Christ did not raise from the dead, we would be fools. And today, some people celebrate that day. I can't call it a holiday. I want I want to, I want to use that a, a passage that I was going to use um, in that sermon, but the Lord has changed my mind and um, through uh, through the vessel of God. Um, I need to be speaking about the Holy Spirit today, but I want to bring bring to you to your attention First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, the first twenty verses. <clears throat> but if we preached that Christ has risen from the dead, how can some of you s say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, that not even Christ has been raised, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. So is, so, so is useless your faith. More than that, we are found false witnesses of God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise. In fact, the dead will not rise. For if, if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. And those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for, for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all, we are of all people most to be pitied. Now, I looked at different translations, and the voice has, has uh, verse 19 translated this way. 
if we have hoped for the anointed, which is Christ, if, if what we hoped for in the anointed doesn't take us beyond this life, then we are world-class fools, deserving everyone's pity. And of course, we'll be celebrating today another day and not Resurrection Sunday. If we leave it right there, if Christ just died, we have no hope. But then we go, we go to verse 20, which says, But Christ in, indeed has been raised from the dead, the, fir the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Amen. Church, Christ has risen indeed. So like I mentioned earlier, I was told by a vessel of God that I need to be speaking of the, uh, on the Holy Spirit. Uh, whenever I get a word, uh, a word, I always run it through, analyze it, and wait till God speaks to me on a personal level. Now, when I, when I was thinking about the Holy Spirit on, on Resurrection Sunday, how do you, you know, I know you guys are all perfect saints, but <laughs> I need a little help once in a while. And resurrection, to me, we find in Corinthians uh, 15, 55, where it says, where, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? I don't see the Holy Spirit there. And, and Pentecost is, is 50 days away. Well, 49 if you count today. But then, you know, I really took it to heart that I, I need to be speaking about the Holy Spirit. And then uh, I heard a Jeremy Camp song. The same power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you or lives in me. Romans 8.11 we read, And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the Spirit who lives in you. Dear brothers and sisters, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, lives in me. The Holy Spirit took Jesus a, uh, you know, when Jesus died, his, his, uh, his, it says that he, he took uh, on us all of our iniquities, and he took all of our sins, all of our, all of our dirtiness, all of our, just all of our shame, and he went down to the pit of hell, and he won, he won the battle, he won the battle right there, in hell. I want to tell you a story. I told this to Pastor yesterday, so it's okay to tell you guys today. <clears throat> Sorry. I had those amazing jelly beans, but now my mouth is all... Please forgive me. So I heard a story of a man walking home. It was a long road, and um, he had to go around the cemetery. It was dark, gloomy. But he decided, you know what, I'll go right through the cemetery. So as he was walking, he did not notice a freshly uh, dug hole. And as you can all imagine, he fell in. When he fell in, he jumped, he crawled. I'm doing everything Pastor told you guys I would do except for sing and dance. Back to the story. Um, so the man couldn't get out, he jumped, he, he crawled, he, he did everything that he possibly could to get out. And losing power, losing his strength, losing the will to fight on, he said, you know what, I'm just going to go in that, in that shadowy corner so the moon doesn't interrupt my sleep, and I will sleep. So 30 minutes go by, maybe an hour, two hours, nope. Who's counting when you're trying to sleep? One sheep, two sheep, three sheep. So, he, another man, another strangler. He was walking by. He decided to cut through the cemetery again. And, as you can all imagine, he fell in as well. But he fell in on the side where, where there was light. And he was jumping. He was crawling. But each time he, he, he would make a move to get out, 
the, because the walls are, are freshly dug, it would just crumble down. And he also was ready to give up. So he decided that I'm going to sit down. But then he heard a voice. You can't get out of here. But he did. <laughs> Lame joke. I apologize. <laughs> However, Jesus uh, got out from the grave. Not that way. But as Romans 8.11 that, that we just read. And the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, he's living in you. And, and, the, and Christ was risen by the power of the Holy Spirit. No other power, no other name is magnificent or so, much so powerful as the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can indwell you today. He can make his house in you. You need to give him the opportunity. Open up your hearts to receive him. Let me give you another passage. This is 1 Corinthians 3.16. But don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and, the, and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? The spirit of God lives in you. Uh, as some of you know, I am taking classes um, at North Point Bible College, and we had a, um, a little debate discussion as part of the class on sanctification. When are you sanctified? Are you sanctified right when you, when you become a Christian? Are you, is your sanctification uh, a journey, or are you fully sanctified when you go to heaven? I'm not going to discuss this here. I will tell you my point of view. You are sanctified when you become a Christian. And your life is a road for, you, for, for your sanctification to grow. And of course, when you pass on, provided that you allow Jesus into your heart, you will go to heaven. Your sanctification is complete. Now, I'd like to bring to you a quote that Chris Hodges, a founding pastor of the Church of the Highlands, uh, he's a big um, Christian writer, and he says, The Holy Spirit does not make me better than you. The Holy Spirit makes me a better me. Without the Holy Spirit, we have nothing. These empty words are nothing without the Holy Spirit. In history, we read, we can find that Jesus was a man. Jesus was a man that lived in the time that the Bible describes him to live. However, if he was just a man, he had a great philosophy. And, and philosophy, there's a lot of philosophers. Buddha was a philosopher, Muhammad was a philosopher, and if Jesus was just a philosopher, what are we doing here? Like, we would, we would be world-class fools to, to come here. But because the Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead, we have life. Our church is a Spirit-filled church. Why? Because Jesus, because of Jesus, because 50 days when Jesus uh, went up to, to be with his heav uh, Heavenly Father, as a matter of fact, Acts 1 8, we read, But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I, we live in America, so that's pretty far from Jerusalem. Uh, there's Jerusalem, Pennsylvania, and Jerusalem, this and that, but we. We live pretty far from Jerusalem, the city of David. Now, if the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead is indwelling in us, living in us, the, the, the Holy Spirit is, why are we so gloomy? Why, are we, uh, why don't we have that joy that the Lord gives us? Where is it? And let me tell you, we let the enemy 
let, let uh, in our hearts the doubt. We let the enemy take that joy away. Now, if we read in First Corinthians, First Corinthians twelve, uh, seven through eleven, over here it talks about um, the manifestations of the Spirit, and um, let me read this to you. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So it's for everybody. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. Through another, a message of knowledge, by the, by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing, that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of the tongues. All of these are the works of one and the same Spirit. And He distributes them to each as He, as he determines. Brothers and sisters, there's a whole list of manifestations of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I want, I want, I want you guys to take this, in, take this in. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is living in you. He's living in me. We are the, the Holy Spirit filled individuals. Again, if we let Him, we can, we can stop the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. You have the ability to receive that gift. But no, n nobody's going to come and force you to take the gift. I have water. I can't just throw it at you. That'd be impolite. I, I can offer this water to you. Of course, I need it more than you guys, but you know. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, it's a gift. You just need to receive it. Let's go to Romans 8.14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So if you want to be known as the children of God, you need to be led by the Spirit. You know, uh, in, in the early church, how do they know that that these were the children of God. Because Paul writes one of his epistles. He says, We came to you, not just with the word of knowledge, but with works and demonstrations. I want, that's what I want in my life. I want that power that, that Jesus was raised by. The Holy Spirit. My time is ticking away. So let me conclude. Thank you. What inside of you needs to be raised from the dead? Is it your relationship? Is it your health? Is it your finances? Whatever it is, the Holy Spirit can raise it to life. During communion, I played a song. We stand on your promises that you would come for another touch of the Holy Spirit. Who needs another touch of the Holy Spirit? I know I do. I know I do. I'm, you know, I'm willing to go down here right now and pray for the Holy Spirit to just come down now with power. Now, if you're, if you're in the service this morning and you need to be refreshed by the Holy Spirit, I'm going to put, a, a, I'm going to put that song on very quietly in the background. If, if you guys want to come up here, we have elders here, we have our pastor here, we have uh, a vessel of God here. The Holy Spirit is going to pour out His power. But you need to, you need, you're going to need to want it. I want, I want to be touched by the Holy Spirit. I want to live my life every single day knowing that the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the, le from the dead is living in me. Amen? Let's pray, church. Father God, in this Resurrection Sunday, Father God, we want to be filled by the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead 
let it, let it live in us. Father God, may you be so present in this place right now, Father. May everybody's heart just be touched. Father God, we surrender ourselves to you right now. Not our will, but yours be done. Father God, if nobody else comes up here, I want to be touched by your Holy Spirit right now, Father. Father God, I want to cry out to you. I want that, I want that power to dwell in me as it, as it dwelled Jesus when he was down in the pits of hell. Father God, may the Holy Spirit just come and wreck our lives for your glory, Jesus. Not our will, but yours be done, Father. If there's anybody else who wants to come join me, the altar is open. I know it's getting close to 10 o'clock, or 12 o'clock. It's already 12 o'clock. But the Spirit of God wants to indwell, to, indwell in you today. The Holy Spirit that, that raised Jesus from the dead is alive and well today. Holy Spirit is not dead. Jesus is not dead. He is surely alive. Yes. Let me get the microphone. I will. I think, I think the whole church should respond. Really just come up. Pray for one another. Others can come up. Pray for each other. What, what happened to Vasily? Oh. Okay. Anybody else? Come on up. We're not going to make you pray publicly, but we'll just pray, pray for one another. Come on up. You know what? Just come and ask God to make you willing to be willing. We're going to have a corporate prayer because every one of us are in a different place. Every one of us have different needs, things that we're withholding, and God wants to meet us where we are. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we come, Lord. We come as a body. We ask, Holy Spirit, come. You are welcome in our life. In those places where we have resisted, we ask you to make us willing to be willing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, right now, we ask for the Holy Spirit. And you said, if we ask, you would give the Holy Spirit. We ask right now that you will fall on us anew. And we begin to see things differently. We'll have more power in our life to overcome the things that we need to overcome. Greater faith that you will build in us from places where there's doubt and fear and sorrow. There'll be healing of all kinds in the name of Jesus we ask. We lay ourselves before you. Because of ourselves, we're nothing, but Jesus is everything. Holy Spirit, you are the Spirit of the living God. You fell once. You've fallen many times throughout the course of history to this very point. We are not so sophisticated. We are not so educated. We are not so rich that we still don't need to cry out to you because we are a needy people. And in the name of Jesus, we ask you right now, according to what your plan is for us, it may be different for every single one of us that are here, but according to your plan, that you will will and you will do it, Lord Jesus. You will do it this very moment. Come in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to to just come in front of your presence, Father God, and just lay ourselves down in front of you, Father. Father, just come right now, Father, and touch your people, Father. Father, we are waiting. We need a touch, a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit right now, Father. Jesus.
Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Christ that was that was poured out for our forgiveness. Lord, about the sheep. Thank you, Lord Jesus.